There will be a big January 6th committee hearing next week. It could be the final hearing. And that means that there are some strands that are being pulled by this investigation as it gets closer to wrapping up, including one of the key coup architects, John Eastman, a former Trump lawyer who had his phone seized by the feds this summer. That was a sign that a lot of folks involved in these probes were looking at him as someone who at least potentially had criminal evidence on his phone, on his person. Now the committee wants a judge to review over 500 documents that have not been produced, saying that basically Eastman owed them from months ago. The committee is citing a batch of emails that Eastman had basically shielded with basically saying, well, that's the proof that he's been improperly shielding other documents. That is just one person who worked directly for Trump. Then you have these allies or enablers. Take Republican Senator Ron Johnson. You may recall that he has changed his story as the pressure mounted, which is a reminder that these investigations matter, that the facts do sometimes change what politicians do. It was this committee investigation that showed that Johnson's top staffer was texting an aide to Mike Pence on January 6th, trying to still get involved and somehow furnish materials that might have helped stage another element of the plan to overthrow the election. This was the fake or fraudulent electors, and the idea was that there would be a go-between that Johnson would somehow give that to Pence. Now, today we're learning he was texting Trump's attorney before and after the contact with the aide. Johnson tells NBC, well, the involvement there was uh, just an hour, which is his way of reducing it. Of course, an hour on January 6th matters a lot, and that is many, many more times than something he said a few months ago when he said it was just a few seconds. If this is all ringing a little bit of bells, that's because sometimes these reporters we show you who have that job of just kind of tracking people down while they're also writing their stories and working sources, they're on site. And sometimes when they get up to someone on site, well, that creates more pressure. Mr. Johnson has tried to spin this many ways, but he, well, he found himself confronted by a journalist, and this happened. How much did you know about what your chief of staff was doing with the alternate slates of electors? No, you're not. I can see your phone. I can see your screen. Can you what your chief of staff was doing? Does your chief of staff still work for you, Senator? Can you explain what happened there? Why was your chief of staff even offering this to the vice president? Complete non story. We issued a statement. And this is a non story. I don't, I don't know what you're, what you're even concerned about. Well, they said that Did you, you were, your chief of staff was saying that you offered, my, 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 you wanted to tell, no, provide no, no, the no, alternate no, electors of no, Michigan no, this, and Wisconsin this, this, to Vice President Mike Pence. This, this was a staff to staff exchange, and I was, you know, basically unaware of it. And the chief of staff contacted the vice president's staff. So do you want this? They said no, and, and we didn't deliver it, and that's the end of the story. But why was he even asking for that? Because somebody delivered this to our office and asked to deliver that to the vice president. Did you support the, his efforts to try to get those slates to the vice president? No, I, I, I had no knowledge of this. I, I, I had no knowledge of this. I, I, I had no knowledge of this. Who's the person? I, I, had, no, I, you know, I, I had no involvement in an alternate state of, uh, slate of electors. I had no idea this thing would be delivered to us, got delivered staff to staff. My chief staff did the right thing, contacted the vice president's staff. Uh, they said didn't want it, so we didn't deliver it. Who's the that's, again, that's the end of the story. That's not the end of the story. We wanted to show you that entire exchange, including shout out to the reporter, because Mr. Johnson has changed his story, meaning if he's telling the truth now, he wasn't then. Then he was claiming he had no knowledge of this, that it was all staff stuff, that he wasn't involved. But the investigation has shown that he was intimately involved before and after, and not just talking to another random staffer, but the coup lawyer who we showed you had his phone searched. Now, it may be that Mr. Johnson never broke any laws and is just trying to duck and run from something he knows was bad, publicly, politically, or otherwise. But the facts do matter. And the lie, and this is strange, sometimes the lie helps reveal the truth. The truth is this was so bad that even in the magnified Republican Party, this year Ron Johnson wanted to run from this. He didn't want credit for being the last guy doing the last failed part of the coup. And that's why he claimed then that he had no knowledge of it. 
And tonight the news is he had knowledge of it. He himself was not staff to staff, but he was personally talking to Eastman about it. And if there's more to this story, well, we'll see if he keeps denying it because it would appear that he was one of the most involved senators in the thing that Georgia prosecutors now say they're indicting people for, which is elector fraud, which, if you do it completely, is still a crime in the United States of America. We will keep on doggedly looking at the receipts and bringing them to you as they come together. Hey, I'm Ari Melber. Thanks for watching The Beat. I wanted to let you know I'm writing a forward to the January 6th committee's full report, which is coming out soon from Harper Collins. You can go pre-order the book right now, and it'll come to you first when the report comes out, in the fall or whenever the government releases it. Just search Melber Jan 6 on Amazon or your favorite independent book site and click pre-order. You'll be the first to get both the report and my new piece on the coup conspiracy. You can also go to melberbook.com and order it there.